The first place I went to was Buffalo Exchange in Brookline. I know, I know, everyone's heard of Buffalo Exchange, it's flipping everywhere at this point. But there is something to be said about a thrift shop that curates quality pieces that are consistently on trend. <laughs> very cute, uh, very furry, looks like a little animal. You don't even need a pet poodle when I have this. Exactly. <laughs> Let's name him Herbert. <laughs> Bye Herbert. Bye Herbert. Bye, Herbert. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so that cute. is so cute. I'm like in heaven right now. <laughs> Look at all your finds. Look at all my finds. A few moments later. Ooh. It's too small. Oh no. It wasn't right. It wasn't right. It wasn't right for you. It doesn't right. deserve you. Exactly. It has to get more oh, fitted girl. to you. So awesome. I have to get more fitted to it. <laughs> And now we must leave Rachel to her online class. Rachel, any last words? YOLO! <laughs> Peace! Out! <laughs> any last words that don't make you seem like a 40-year-old trying to like imitate a teenager from 2010? I really think that's a big part of my personality, though. <laughs> The next shop I went to was the Goodwill right by Boston University. This place is honestly one of Boston's underrated secrets because by placing this Goodwill directly next to BU's most expensive dorm, <coughs> Stuvie 2, they are ensuring that the place will be filled with cast-offs from the Canada Goose wearing contingent at BU. To put it plainly, this place is filled with Doc Martens and Ralph Lauren, but for like 10 bucks. True story. I honestly didn't even realize that they had records here. Oh my god, that's a Frank Sinatra. That's legit Frank Sinatra. Oh my god. Is it wait? Oh no. It's empty. Why would you donate a Frank Sinatra thingy and then not donate the actual record? I'm so upset right now. <gasps> I then went deeper into Alston to Vivant Vintage, a Boston-based thrift shop with a very Western rocker feel. The place was filled with vintage flannels and cowboy boots, and they had an amazing vintage band tee section, which unfortunately, I cannot afford at this time. I love all the little touches though around the store, like the jukebox and the necktie mobile. It really feels like someone took the time to design this place. And shout out to the mural on the side of the wall. It is so flipping awesome. But on my way back from Vivant Vintage, I stumbled across this old record shop called Looney Tunes. I love that I didn't even know this place existed. Records were everywhere spilling out of boxes and in piles, but the store had some real gems from vintage Beatles, David Bowie, and a nicely sized pile of Sinatra. <laughs> I even found an original 1970s soundtrack from The Godfather, but then they told me that they only accept cash. And that was the most depressive moment of my credit card using existence. I then headed to Cambridge to visit the holy grail of Boston thrift shops, the Garment District. If you can only visit one thrift shop in Boston, I really recommend this one. The store is teeming with both contemporary and vintage items with different sections focusing on certain clothing pieces. My favorite room in the store is the vintage women's section where they stock all types of clothes ranging from the 60s to the 90s. Downstairs is also Boston costume with a wide variety of costumes, both for rent and for sale. I started working here in 2009. Wow. And right now it's 2021, so I have a quick bath, so 10 or 11 years, I guess. What's like the coolest thing you've ever found in a thrift shop? I found a great Van Halen t-shirt. Nice. I'm a big Van Halen fan, so so many ACDC shirts that I had to finally stop <laughs> with that. Um, so those are two that come to mind right off the bat, but the ACDC collection I have is definitely pretty vast. Um, makes sense that we're one of the biggest bands in the world. So, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And last thing, can you tell me about the necklace you're wearing? The fish hook one is uh, a friend of mine gave it to me. She was, uh, I think her dad was a fisherman and um, she uh, just thought of me for some reason, I guess because I'm a catch. And, um, <laughs> and then I just have my, uh, you know, the rags the cat for the government district this is sort of like a little name tag to work here and um then i have a carissa johnson pin and my van halen that i love <laughs> and of course black lives matter just because uh you know we have to support the next place i went to raspberry beret is all about sustainability they do not accept fast fashion brands for donations preferring to resell only long-lasting quality pieces their vibe is very anthropology inspired with the color palette usually matching the current season Downstairs, they have a curated selection of vintage pieces from different eras, all organized according to color, as it should be.
Can I ask about your outfit today? What are you wearing? My outfit today? Um, I hate to say it, but I'm dressed in Target clothing. <laughs> Um, I did get this sweatshirt here at Raspberry Beret, so I'm not totally cheating. Um, but most of my wardrobe does come from here. But if anybody wants to know about the pants, I got them at clearance at Target. Well, so. you know what? Nobody needs to know. <laughs> Great Eastern Trading Company is an explosion of color with a history rooted in Cambridge. Started in 1969, the shop was run for many years by six friends who actually lived in a commune together. Nowadays, the shop is run by local Boston personality Neftali McCrary and specializes in campy clothing from the 20s to the 80s. Next, I headed to Beacon Hill to check out consignment boutique Covet. Located on Charles Street, a beautiful cobblestone shopping area that I didn't even know existed until now, this place is an Instagram dream, as each piece looked like it came from an influencer's closet. Covet also smells amazing, lacking the musty closet smell generally found in secondhand stores. Overall, the vibe is very current and TikTok, with a healthy mix of both luxury and more affordable pieces. Can you tell me what's the coolest thing you've ever thrifted? I'm a big denim person, so I have over 200 pairs of vintage jeans. I found, <laughs> I think it was these actually, these 70s Salvage Levi's for $7 at a Goodwill. Oh my god! And these sell for like $250. That's awesome. Wait, can I, can I have a little um, tour of your outfit in general? Yeah, um, this is a vintage 90s Harley Davidson t-shirt, mm -hmm. 70s Salvage Levi's ring from Covet. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Man. mom says that I look like Jessie from Saved by the Bell in this outfit. Anyway, time for the try on haul. The first thing I got was from the Garment District. This is an oversized navy woolen blazer. It's by a brand named Herman Geist and I was doing research online and it lost its trademark in 1990. So this has to have been made no later than 1990. I was watching an episode of The Nanny the other day and Margaret Sheffield, like the daughter in The Nanny show, was wearing a blazer exactly like this one. If you look at images from the early 90s, there are still remnants of shoulder pads left over from the 80s and an oversized baggy look when it comes to blazers and long coats. Honestly though, I've been wanting a blazer like this for so long, so I'm so happy I found this in the garment district. It was 13 bucks, which is a steal. Next, I got this hot pink 100% wool knitted cardigan, also from the garment district. This cardigan is from a brand called The Villager, which according to my research was actually quite popular in the 60s. Any tag that has an RN number would be anywhere from the 50s to the 80s. And according to how many number of digits there are in your RN number, you can pinpoint around what era or decade it was from. Apparently, when you have care and instructions on a tag, those didn't start until 1971. So according to my calculations, I am going to assume that this cardigan is from the early 70s. The next thing I got from the garment district is another 100% wool cardigan. This is probably one of the most interesting things I got because I literally just picked it up and it was like 22 bucks, but I looked up the brand, which is Barry, and apparently Barry clothing goes for like $1,000 a shirt. Like literally a thousand dollars and this is vintage berries so I don't even know how much this would cost right now. All in all this probably belonged to some rich society grandma in Massachusetts. I'd like to thank Ethel Carruthers Worthington for asking her maid to look through her closet and throw away anything that she doesn't wear anymore since the 1980s because now I have my own rich society grandma cardigan. Okay the last thing I got I definitely splurged but <sighs> I will never find something like this ever again. This is a Robert Rodriguez gown, which goes for thousand, three thousand dollars easy. I got it for $146. One of my oldest friends is getting married on May 31st, and I'm gonna be vaccinated by then. So this is absolutely the dress that I'm going to be wearing to her wedding. But I don't know, when I pulled it out, the salesperson actually told me that when it came in, she was like, oh, she gasped too. And she was like constantly wondering like who is going to be the person that buys this dress. And I am, I am that person. I bought this dress. Thank you, Robert, for making such a dress. 
This next skirt is from Buffalo Exchange. I am so happy with this. It is a helmet lang, so designer score. I got it for 30 bucks. Helmet lang usually goes for 100 to 300 bucks, so that is a really nice steal for me. I've been looking for a skirt like this for ages. It's long and flowy, but it's not like poofy, so it kind of tucks you in, but it's a white midi skirt, which means that it will match with almost anything. I also love the waistband over here because the panini did something to my waistline, and this one cinches it in quite nicely. I don't know, I totally see this with t-shirts and like blazers and overcoats on it. I can dress it for summer and I can also dress it for winter. So this is a super versatile piece that I can have for all seasons and for a long time. I am hoping to not ever need to buy another flowy white skirt. Hopefully this will last me for years. This next piece is an A-line dress from Old Navy, which I got from Goodwill. I got it for seven bucks. I'm going to assume that this is from around 2012 to 2013. Like I was 16, 17 then, and I remember a very specific time in high school when everybody was wearing this grandma flower print and I thought it was hideous. I was like, what are people doing? Like my grandmother walks around in nightgowns with that design. Why are people walking around with my grandmother's nightgowns? Also during that time I was like very goth, so I would never have picked up a flowery design like this. I also feel like it's from the early 2010s because this is like a very skater skirt type of cut, which was very popular in the early 2010s. But like, honestly, I don't care if it's from like 10 years ago, this silhouette looks amazing on my body type. So I am so happy with this dress. Next, I got these orange mules from Raspberry Beret. They are originally Aileen Fisher. I have never had a pair of mules before. I was looking for a pair of sandals with closed toes because I definitely want to start wearing sandals in the summer, but I don't like showing my toes out in public. So these are perfect. It's also suede. So it just feels like very soft. I just feel like someone named Annabelle who lives in Toluca Lake and his neighbors with Demi Lovato would wear something like this with maybe like a long white shirt dress and she's taking her boyfriend to this really upscale beach restaurant in Malibu. Annabelle would wear these type of meals. So I want to manifest Annabelle energy. Anyway, darlings, please remember to dislike and unsubscribe. Ta-ta, see you next week.